Welcome to Motorcycle Insider. My name is Tristan, and this is your destination for information from inside the power sports industry, reviews, first rides, buyer's guides, and anything else you'll need to make an informed decision. If you like what you see here, please subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, ride safe out there. Alrighty, I'm gonna head up to the shop and go grab us a sweet little Aprilia. Today's machine was provided by Seminole Power Sports in Sanford, Florida. SPS has been in business since 1982, and they have everything that you need to get started on your next adventure. Call or stop by today to get started. Today's machine is a 2012 Aprilia Tuano V4 APRC. APRC stands for Aprilia Performance Ride Control, and it was the nomenclature they used to describe this bike when it came out in 2012. APRC is an array of electronic rider assist features that range from traction control, anti-lock brakes, wheelie control, a quick shifter. Though this bike is from 2012, it shares a lot of similarities with the current one. The same chassis carries the same engine with a few exceptions. The bodywork is basically the same with the exception of the front bearing, but now you can get it in an RR or an RF factory edition. This is a pre-owned machine, obviously being in 2012. It does have some aftermarket parts. It's got these nice shorty adjustable levers, bar-end mirrors, which I am a fan of on this type of bike. Not every bike needs bar-end mirrors, but I think they look good on this one. Uh, it's got some RNG frame sliders and a very nice Austin Racing exhaust. Uh, this bike sounds phenomenal. <laughs> very very linear pull you have power no matter where you are in the rev range and that's a good thing whereas a lot of inline four race bikes like your zx10 your r1 your cbr1000 things like that are inline four cylinders which make a whole lot of power up top and really not a lot below 6000 rpm this is much more noticeable in a 600 class bike because the bike feels really slow below 6000 rpm Leader bikes do have enough torque to make up for that deficit of power below 6,000 RPM, but nonetheless, there's a much bigger hit in the top half of the rev range, and that's usually where you want to ride the bike. Now, for daily riding, that's not always ideal. Having some power down low and in the mid range is very useful. It's, it's usable power. It's not up top, wound down, racetrack power. The Tuono is a Street Fighter version of Aprilia's flagship race bike, the RSV4 which also comes in an RR or RF factory configuration. Typically, when a manufacturer releases a naked bike or Street Fighter version of one of their flagship Supersports, 
it's watered down. It doesn't have quite the same power or quite the same feel that its bigger brother has. This is not the case with the Aprilia. Really, they take an RSV4, they put some handlebars on it, they shorten up the front fairing, and there you go. But there is something to be said about that. If you're considering the difference between an R1 and an MT10, the MT10 is going to be a lot more comfortable. The seat's lower, the bars are much higher, and you just have a very, very upright, more comfortable seating position, whereas on the R1, you're hunkered down like you would on any other super sport. This bike, though it does have upright handlebars, the seating position is unchanged. And the bars are higher, but not by very much. So you are still leaned forward in quite an aggressive position when you ride this bike, but it's not nearly as, as hunkered down as you would be on the RSV4. But on a bike like this with this much power, you kind of need that. If you were sitting straight upright on this bike, you probably wouldn't be able to hold on to it. The power delivery from this bike unreal. It pulls everywhere in the rev range in every gear. And you're not going to be able to lay into the throttle for very long because the acceleration is intense and you'll be going much faster than you should be very quickly. The engine in this generation of the Tuanu is a longitudinal 65 degree V4 with dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder. The 998.9 cubic centimeter power plant is achieved by a boring stroke of 78 by 52.3. I mentioned the bore and stroke because the new 1100 V4 engine uses an 81 millimeter bore and the same 52.3 millimeter stroke. This engine is fundamentally the same and the bore has been increased to go from 998 cubic centimeters to 1077. The 1000 cubic centimeter engine produces 167 horsepower and 82 foot pounds of torque, while the 1100 produces 175 horsepower and 89 foot pounds of torque. The Brembo monoblock radial calipers clamp down on dual 320mm floating stainless steel discs. And in the rear, a Brembo floating caliper with two 32mm isolated pistons clamp down on a 220mm disc. The twin spar aluminum frame and the double braced aluminum swing arm complement each other very nicely with a polished shine. The suspension, courtesy of Saks, features an upside down 1x1 43mm fork. The fork is adjustable for spring preload hydraulic compression dampening, and rebound dampening. The rear piggyback monoshock from Saks is also adjustable for preload, compression, and rebound dampening. The cluster on this machine features an analog tachometer as well as an LCD readout for the rest of your information. This was scrapped for the new model in favor of a full color TFT display that shows all of your information. Other revisions include a new front fairing as well as new headlights. The differences in coloration are due to the fact that the unit I recorded here is an RF which is not available in 2012, though a base model in this black colorway is still available for the new model. Not only is this Italian masterpiece beautiful, but it's a lot of fun to ride too. It's thrilling, it's exciting, and it's a whole lot of fun. While it's not the most comfortable bike in the world, but again that's not the purpose, it is comfortable enough for your commute to work or rides upwards of an hour long. You're not going to be having too hard of a time supporting your weight on your wrists. You are a little bit more upright than you are on a typical super sport machine. It is still an aggressive position, but nonetheless, it is comfortable. And now we're going to take this Aprilia for a ride, and then we're going to score it in 10 different categories.
And now, for the daily category, we'll be looking at comfort, reliability, maintenance, and practicality. Now, as far as comfort goes, it's not the most comfortable bike in the world, but the seat is shaped nicely, the bars are in a good position, and the bike does feel like it's purpose-built from an ergonomic standpoint. You do need to be a little more hunkered down than you would on the typical naked bike due to the power and the insane acceleration from this bike, but nonetheless, comfort is going to receive a 6 out of 10. Now, reliability and maintenance are historically the bane and the downfall of Italian bikes. I'd say Ducati more so has these issues with, you know, being reliable and having very, very expensive and frequent maintenance. Aprilia is not so bad about that due to their design techniques. They just make a little bit more sense to work on than something like a Panigale does. Reliability with this bike is not awful. I have heard some horror stories about this platform and the RSV4 and some other things from Aprilia, but nonetheless, this bike does have between 10 and 11,000 miles on it, and it still does run very strong. But all that being said, reliability is going to receive a 6 out of 10. Now, as far as maintenance goes, the service intervals on this bike are about typical, what you would expect for a 1,000cc Super Sport. Not terrible, not the best either. You know, there are things that do have longer service intervals as far as mileage between oil changes go. And maintenance like that, typical upkeep maintenance, oil change, things like that, are going to run about the same for every machine. There are some exceptions everywhere, but the problem when you run into high maintenance costs is if you have some kind of serious problem, and if there's hours and hours of diagnosis needed to hunt down a problem, that's when you're going to be losing a lot of money. That being said, though, maintenance is going to receive a 7 out of 10. Now, as far as practicality goes, this thing's not going to be nearly as practical as an adventure bike or a sport tour. You can't really put anything in it, which is the case with most bikes that are outside of that sport touring bagged bike type category. But it is comfy enough. You could commute on it. Now, the only downside here, I would say, and surprisingly enough, it's the power. If you don't have the utmost confidence in your ability and your experience as a motorcycle rider, this bike is going to scare the mess out of you. It's, it's a very fast bike. It's torquey, it's powerful, and like I said, the power is extremely linear and it's everywhere in the rev range. At no point in the revs is this bike easy to control the power. Now, for an experienced rider, it's no big deal. If you've you know ridden really powerful bikes like this before, it's fine. But it is a different animal than just a 1,000cc Super Sport. So, for those reasons, practicality is going to receive a 7 out of 10. Now, as far as price goes, Italian bikes carry a premium price as well as premium equipment. You always get what you pay for, and this rings true especially with motorcycles. Now, I will preface with this. No amount of money is going to be worth it to you if the bike is not what you want. If you don't love it, need it, like it, gotta have it, the price doesn't matter. And it goes the same the other way. If, if the bike is not what you want and you don't love it, need it, gotta have it, no amount of discount or money off is going to make you want it anymore. So keep in mind that you get what you pay for, but this is a pretty expensive bike and price is going to receive a 7 out of 10. Now, all things about price being said, if you do want to save a buck on one of these things, I would recommend trying to find a used one. Not very likely, I don't see a lot of these pop up in the used market very often, but for example, this 2012 with about 10,000 miles is on sale at my shop for $69.88, and that's a heck of a deal. That's This is a lot of bike for $7,000. And as we round out the daily score, this bike receives a 33 out of a possible 50. Pretty good for a bike like this, you know, it's not really something that's made to be a daily rider, it is more of a track weapon. But it is a track weapon that you can ride around on the street, unless you keep it under control and you don't lose your license. So all things being said, 33 out of 50 is pretty good. And now we'll move on to performance. Starting with power, this bike is extremely, extremely powerful. 167 horsepower, 82 foot-pounds of torque is a heck of a lot, especially in a bike at this weight, um, mid-400s. Now, the only reason that this bike doesn't score perfectly in this category is because the newer 1100 version does have more horsepower and more torque, and I'm sure it makes a pretty dramatic difference. So, that being said, power's going to get a 9 out of 10. Braking is good, but keep in mind, this is a used bike. I don't know the exact condition of these brakes. I do know that they work. I do know that they stop well. 
it can bring the bike to a stop with relative ease. It's not really an issue, but they might not be in perfect showroom condition, which they're probably not seeing as there's about 10,000 miles on the bike. But nonetheless, knowing that these could be just a little bit better, braking is going to get an 8 out of 10. Moving on to suspension. The Sax suspension that's equipped on this bike is very good. Sax isn't really my favorite. I am a little bit more biased to Olin's and WP. WP doesn't make a lot of suspension for this type of bike. But that being said, the Olin's and the WP systems that I've rode do ride better. These are not bad in any way, don't get me wrong. As far as cornering composure and under acceleration and under braking, it does what it's supposed to do. There's just a little bit of a feel thing I'm a little more biased to with other suspension setups. That being said, suspension is going to get an 8 out of 10. Now, moving on to technology, the APRC systems and the ABS and all of the tech that's on this bike does work really, really well, but the user interface does leave something to be desired. Now, keep in mind, this is a user interface from 2012. So, just remember that, right? Back in 2012, technology that exists today was not anywhere near being on motorcycles so I did have some issues trying to engage the launch control and thumbing through the menus I did get a hang of it eventually but I couldn't figure out the launch control I could have looked it up I just didn't so that being said technology is gonna get a 6 out of 10 now the final category of performance is gonna be handling the bike handles extremely well it's nimble it's flickable now, it's not the lightest bike in the world, like the 401 that I reviewed, but it's in a totally different category. Obviously, a bike this large with this big of an engine is going to have more weight, but nonetheless, it does feel very light and agile. Handling is going to receive a 9 out of 10. And in case you're curious of what I'm doing here driving through the shopping center, I'm trying to catch my reflection in the mirror to see how I look on this thing. You do feel very cool riding an Aprilia around, I'm not going to lie. You feel pretty awesome. You feel like you're on top of the world. You've got the coolest bike on the street. It didn't really show up good in the video because it's kind of far away, but nonetheless, I was trying to see what I looked like riding by. <laughs> now, let's sum up all of the scores here. With a daily score of 33 and a performance score of 40, this bike's going to receive a total score of 73 out of 100. Now that we're finished with this video, I just want to throw in a little disclaimer. I would not discourage anybody from buying an Italian bike. It really just depends on what you want. If you really want that bike and you know it's going to make you happy, go buy it. Sure, maintenance can be a little expensive. You might have an issue here and there that you might not have had on a Japanese bike. Japanese bikes are known for their insanely good, solid reliability. And that's not what Italian bikes are known for. It's the class. It's the presence. It's the performance. It's the fact that you have an Italian bike. And if that's what you want to have, then by all means, go out and get it. But on the flip side of that, if you're just scraping by and you could just barely afford a motorcycle, you might have a lot of downtime where you're not riding if you do have an issue or you do come up on an expensive maintenance that you don't know how to do or can't afford. So that being said, the bike is great, but just budget a little bit extra for it. But don't let that stop you. If you want the bike, go buy the bike. You're not going to live forever. You can't take the money with you, but you can take the good times with you. And that is everything that you need to know about the 2012 and forward Aprilia Tuanu V4. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And as always, ride safe out there.